There is a wonderful proverb that I'm sure that many of you are already aware of. It speaks of where there is no vision, the people will perish. Well, we would like to talk about that today as we speak of and highlight some of the bold black leadership right here on the continent, specifically right here in Kigali, Rwanda, and even in the East African community. However, before you we do, please, please be sure, subscribe, like, and share. is that you think you need a handout. Everything you need is right under your foot, but you looking everywhere else for help instead of to yourself and what you can produce for yourself. This is Africa's dilemma. You are parading yourself before the world as international beggars when you gave civilization to the world. Your problem is not America. Your problem is not Israel. Your problem is not Britain. Your problem is your disunity and your dependence on others to do for you what you could do for yourself. You have some of the finest minds in the world, but they're in Europe and they're in America making money while Africa suffers. Why don't we create politically stable environment and call the children of Africa back home to help build Africa. We are your children and we will come and help. Greetings, greetings, peace and blessings. We are the Mohammeds, the residential tourists from 85 to Africa. We are living in the after and we are so grateful that we are able to come to you and share with you to be your, your guide to living a Full and adventurous life. <laughs> I'm not claiming that. <laughs> At any rate, we're thankful, we're grateful uh, that you would allow us a moment of your time that we can share with you of our experience that we've been having and continue to have right here on this beautiful continent of Africa, specifically right here in Kigali, Rwanda, as we look forward to exploring more of what this wonderful continent and the entire globe has to offer. So now, there are many reasons, as we said before, of what has brought us here to the continent, uh, and specifically, again, right here to Kigali Rwanda. However, as we've been here, and this particular reason that we want to highlight, it seems like it's spreading. Mm -hmm. And many people don't realize before and I, I, I'm only speaking, we only could speak on our experience mm -hmm. and what other expats have said to us, whether they're here in Kigali or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. People don't realize we do a lot of research before we choose our country of destination. And one of the main things that we research is, of course, the laws of the land, as well as, or one of the most important factors for us is the leadership. The leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to black Americans, one thing that we look for is strong black leadership. Oh. Bold black leadership. Brilliant. We, we look for leadership that's not heavily influenced or bow down to the Western media or the Western world. And so that plays a big part on the country that people choose. Specifically for us now. I mean, that was numero I don't know if it was numero uno, but it was right up there, ranking very, very high mm -hmm. as numero uno, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we definitely, for our background, we've come from that type of leadership, mm -hmm. um, and we're raised to be that type of people. Right. So we definitely looked for what kind of leadership, not just welcomes black Americans or expats in general, but those that are particularly fighting for the rights of their own people. Right. 
and not bowing down to influences on outside world to make them change who they are. Exactly. And that's one of the things that we really, really, really love about the president here in Rwanda. We've watched videos where he's telling the Western media, you're not going to dictate how we do our business over here. You, you know, we don't tell you how to live your life. You're not going to come over here and put your ways on us. And um, that was something that's very intriguing to us about the president that was here. Real smooth. Doesn't, doesn't raise his voice. Doesn't raise the same monotone the whole time, but he's like. <laughs> but he's very clear. Mm -mm, he's not phased like nobody. Very he's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, not phase, very clear, very matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, firm, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, a visionary, if you will. Yeah. You know, a visionary from our from our perspective and our vantage point. Now, okay, so let's look at it. All right, we know that all leadership is not perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know, you. You try to do, as a leader, the best that you can within your ability to do. So everybody's not going to really... You can't please everybody. You're not going to please everybody, no, you know. Not. But that, but see, see, that's what makes, you know, uh, a leader, right? You know, a leader has to have vision. And the vision is the vision of the leader. And if the vision is one that is looking out for the better interest of the whole, then our personal wants and desires, we may have to forego mm -hmm. because we got to look at the bigger picture. And sometimes we miss that point and, you know, we might see the lesser side of that particular leadership, not realizing he or she is looking at the, the end goal, the overall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, as my wife was saying, you know, that was uh, very, very, very appealing to us uh, that um, when we were honing in on making that final decision, we were able to see how the leadership here was a leadership in, in its current state, looking out for the betterment of the people. However, looking at the, the from the, the backdrop, looking at the history of what it had come from and his vision his bravery, his uh, his brilliance, you know, to be able within a short period of time now, only twenty nine years, to be able to bring it where it is now, and it's still growing and it's still progressing, right? So that spoke volumes for us. Mm -hmm. It really, really. Thank really you very much. My name is Ansoy from the BBC. I have a quick question uh, for President Kagame. Um, as chair of the Commonwealth, um, I wonder what your priority will be, uh, especially in terms of upholding the values of democracy and human rights, given that there's been a lot of scrutiny on your country and the record of your government, and uh, critics have been pointing out the number of opposition leaders and journalists who are in prison. Uh, I wonder how, what your leadership of this uh, organization is going to look like uh, in the face of that. Now, let me start with the the issue of values. Who defines the values? Or who doesn't actually have values? When people talk about values sometimes, it's, it's one part of the world that has assumed the sole responsibility and the monopoly of defining values. So I want to put this case clear. Those from the north who always assume where BBC comes from, who always think they are the face of values, the rest have to follow. It's a big mistake. It's not true. We have values, too. We, here, in Rwanda, in Africa, we do. No question about it. So I, I just want to let you know that these issues of upholding values and so on, as far as I'm concerned, as I know, as far as Rwandans are concerned, 
We don't need any lessons from BBC or from anyone. I, I, I tell you this with firm conviction. So today we've gathered up some other very strong influential leaders that we've been researching um, where there, there are countries that a lot of expats are going to. Mm -hmm. And one of the main reasons why they're going there is because they can see the vision of the leadership. They want to be a part of that vision. They want to be under that leadership or support that leadership. But these are main um, countries in Africa that expats are flocking to. Yeah, because, you know, with, with a clear vision and a vision that is, um, I guess, helping the country emerge in in that in and of itself is is their security do you know you know that a future is uh there's a there's some promise to the future is is uh, there's some security in that future um and so that's important and many of us already know you know the 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 the, the, the troubles i guess i could say it that way of the, of africa and the countries you know, and its problems with its leadership. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it had an outside influence, right? A lot of colonialization. And even even after having uh, gained its independence, it still left its stench, uh, if you will. And so we know there are a lot of countries who are, um, you know, fighting with the internal corruption and all of that stuff there. When you have leadership, here on the continent in different countries, as we're seeing, that is um, fighting to keep that at an all-time low and ultimately eliminate that that stagnation of their country growing. So when we were doing our research, which was um, two and a half, three years ago, just about uh, the, the president in Tanzania at that time, Mugafuli, was very, very influential in our decision of even coming to East Africa. We had to go and we went to Tanzania first to see if that had what we needed. But we do know that the president at that time over there was very, very much so fearless. He, he was not bowing down to the big, big pharma, to who, to Western media. He wasn't falling for any of the... the the okie doke. The okie doke. <laughs> he, he, he wasn't think, going for it. He was one that had something tested and they said it had COVID and it was like, no, it didn't. He wasn't falling for the COVID like, nah, situations in the beginning when all that happened. <laughs> but on top of that, he had vision. Mm -hmm. He was part of the East African community. Co co was East EAC, East African connection with the railway. Yes. We community. Yeah. yeah. When we went over to Tanzania, um, one of the drivers was showing us the train state, the actual train that was being built. That was going to be going from Tanzania to Rwanda to Kenya, Kenya Uganda. <coughs> it was going to be for importing, exporting. It was a major, major key component in getting these countries um, pretty much reliant on itself. And the vision of what the people loved him. His, even if you go there now, you see his picture all over the place mm. at the airport at the in ho hotels mm. you see the new president as well but they're not taking down Mugafuli's <laughs> picture <laughs> period they're riding it down we're gonna ride it down right we're gonna ride it out this is the special opportunity god have given us we are supposed to move together we are supposed to consider the best issue of economic developments we have no brothers we have no fathers we are supposed to move as africans Africa should move on their own. They are supposed to change the directions. We are supposed to focus according to our directions, according to our environment. That is the only way we can help our people. Nobody should come and say that he's there to save the problems of our people. We are the one, we readers. We are supposed to change the directions as far as economic is concerned for our people. And the only solution is to move, to move together by considering God is the one and the powerful to direct us in every direction. When you have a president and the people love the president, 
Like, for real, for real, love the president. You feel that in the country. You feel that sense of security and that pride. Tanzanians are very proud for people. Rwandans are very proud for They love their country, their president, mm -hmm. um, very proud people. So that is also a reflection of the leadership. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you're right, you know, like with his excellency here on the con on, in, in Rwanda, um, I mean, they won't. They won't let him go. <laughs> they won't let him go. No, they're like, no, no, no. no. They're like, look, you got to, you know, you, you, you got to. So that very well said, sweetie. You know, you know, the love the people that they have for the leadership is a reflection of that particular leadership. You know, mm -hmm. and so we appreciated that very much. And it's like, you know, when I when I when I look at it, it's like this is like the the fulfillment of those because it's not like. Africa didn't have any leaders in the past who right. were moving this direction, you know. Um, you know, Kwame Nkrumah, of course. You know, uh, the one who was able to establish the first country of its of, of independence on the continent. So, that is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all. The black man is capable of managing the whole of us. He's, he, you know, he set, he set the pace, right? And he was a visionary. And so, you know, I would like to think that, you know, fast forward to now, that, you know, we're seeing a, a bit of that fulfillment. It seems that way. It seems that way. Um, you know, and others, of course, we can name, we can list it. Nasser, Mr. the Ugandan president. Um, 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 Museveni. Yeah, Museveni. We, we're learning that Uganda has the one of the biggest, biggest, cult, biggest population of Africans of in, as in all country. Like all Africans, even there's a lot of expats. It's an African melting pot. It's a melting pot <laughs> in Uganda. Uganda has a lot of promise. And then recently, we were listening to the president over there, and. My man is fearless. He's like, and what I love about him, they so they so blackness. They just sit back and they're like, mm -mm. y'all can keep that. Miss me. <laughs> he's like, I'm not about to bring this to my people, and you'll see it in the video. He's he's so smooth with it. It's like they unfazed. They're just like, we don't need your money. We don't need your influence. If you come into Uganda, you come into our country, and this is how we do what we do. I mean, this is the energy that these presidents are coming with, and we love it. We what's the we what do. the young people say for? We here for it, or <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> Final thought on this: Barack Obama, for one, but other Western leaders as, as well, have said that they will tie future aid and development funding in a host of countries, including yours, to what they see on the human rights front, but particularly on these gender and sexual identity issues. Th that How do you feel about that? That would be their biggest mistake, because they should be very careful about black Africa. Black Africa are humble people. We, we never impose our, uh, impose our views on anybody else. We are not like Europeans or like uh, uh, Arabs who want to impose their views. Uh, I normally tell people that uh, when I hear Arabs talking of haram, haram, that's something which is haram, uh, I, I always tell them that my list of haram is much longer than that one of the Arabs. I don't eat fish because I call it snake. I don't eat chicken because I, I think uh, if you eat chicken, you will be unstable. I don't eat pigs. I don't eat uh, very many of those things which you people you eat. Even when, even when I come here, I have a problem of, of what to eat. But I keep this to myself. This is the difference with, 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 with the black people. You know, you need to remember the history of Africa. Uh, our brothers in Mozambique got their freedom because they were assisted by Tanzania, by Zambia. That's how they were able to defeat the Portuguese. We were able to defeat Idi Amin because we were assisted by Tanzania, by Zambia, by Mozambique. Africa has come this far because where we work together, we move forward worked together and defeated the white racists in Southern Africa, in Mozambique, in Zimbabwe, in Angola. We defeated Idi Amin 
uh, and we are ready to work together to defeat these foreigners who are coming with these uh, chauvinistic ideas from the Middle East to implant them in our, in our, in our continent. In our continent, we black people, we, 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 we live and let live. We never try to impose our views on anybody else. L like this, this business of saying, I will not give you aid unless you change your position on, on, on homosexuals. And yet for us, we have got our own way of, of how we have dealt with homosexuals before we even came in, in, in contact with the Europeans. Why don't, we, why don't they let them handle it our way? Keep out. It's, it's, it's giving me, it's giving me, giving me, forget it. <laughs> It's given. It's given something. <laughs> well, this is good. We though. in Africa. We don't, we don't actually know the term. The girls you're trying to say, but it's given. It's given. That's, that's it's given something. We like it. But it's good because yeah. I mean, I, I hope you can feel the passion, right? Again, we understand there's no perfection. You know, we understand that there are some some things that we are not completely aware of that may be uh, not on the level. I don't know, but that's not for us to concern. Yeah, we don't ourselves. know all the the stuff y'all y'all be piling in all the, the stuff <laughs> that, about this president and that leadership. And I'm like, oh, oof, okay, so, wait a minute. Come in, we, we outsiders, so we just seeing the fluff right now, but we just telling you what we look for and what we like. I mean, the fact that there you have uh, a strong black representation in front of you, right? That's a blessing. That's a blessing in and of itself. In, in itself. And the answer to black, we, we've had our black president, but he didn't answer the black. You know, we didn't really get the representation that we mm -hmm. were hoping for, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's just it just does something for us mm -hmm. to be able to see where there is, even though we are not natives or locals, but to see the example of a president that looks like you and me, right, and the people that look like you and me, and he or she are, is giving a proper representation of the of the leadership for the people and that that's very inspi uh, inspiring you mm -hmm. know it really is very inspiring so we are grateful and we really appreciate that and it's giving us continued hope mm -hmm. as we uh, remain here on the continent you know and uh, we're hoping you know we really haven't had this discussion with our girls but we're hoping that uh, you know subliminally or subconsciously they are able to see that you know, there is black leadership. And, let and you know, along with, see, here's the thing. And this just came to my mind, right? There's one thing to have strong black leadership, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's another thing to have a respect for that black mm -hmm. leadership. So what we're, what we experience here. So our girls might not have that understanding because they're here. They're here. Right. But, the, but I guess, you know, what I'm leading to is that, you know, what we, what we experience that there is a respect for authority. It's hard in the oh, States yeah. to get respect for black authority, even and especially among black people. Mm -hmm. So a respect for, even though it's not viewed from their perspective in that way, but from the outside looking in and not being able to experience that coming from the States, seeing that, boy, it's beautiful because, listen, so we were at the hospital <laughs> the other day, right? <laughs> and so I see these individuals, they come in and they're, they're, they're in uniform, right? Now, this is not like, this is a, this is like an outfit uniform. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not like a, a, uh, it was scrubs, right? It was scrubs. So it it looked like it. Scrubs cut off. So they were both, it was two sets of colors. I'm not going to go into all of it, right? So. They're walking in, but with them, they had some other uniformed individuals who were of a more security, military, law enforcement type, right? I'm thinking that these people are some special people, but I'm trying to figure out, well, what is it? Why do they have these, these, this type of outfit, uniform? <laughs> it look, it didn't, I didn't understand it. So I'm like, I'm thinking, I mean, I mean, the presence was strong and heavy of the law enforcement uniformed individuals, I'm thinking that because of that, these people must be important. But I'm like, wait a minute, this don't seem right because I'm not understanding this, right? Long story short, come to find out, they were inmates, right? But they didn't have any, any no shackles, handcuffs, no handcuffs. Shackles. 
these military individual, military style, or security or law enforcement, I don't know, they had no no guns. <laughs> no guns or anything. So my point is that there you would have to have a respect for authority to the degree that you don't even that that stuff is not even required. That they see the authority above and beyond to the point where they would think multiple times before they go against that particular authority. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of leadership. That's the type of governance. That's the type of structure, you know, that, you know, we're going to be, and I'm sitting there and I, when it dawned on me, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. I'm not thinking, you know, somebody going to make a mad dash for it or not, nothing, none of that stuff did. And so I find that very, very, very interesting. So, um, and then I run out and I do a little dance. And then she run out and do a little dance out. to get my attention and then they, they laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> my God. Oh, dancing for the prisoners. So that and and um that's that's just one of the things that we look for. It's not just that we're looking for a place of great security, because we are, a place that's safe because we are. But in order for to have those two things, it has to have a certain amount of leadership right. that makes sure that that's a standard for right. the country. Right. So, um, and that's just for us. That's one of the things we were looking for because we got our mamas with us, but and, for, our children, our and, girls. Our, and the girls. But for other people, they're looking for that strong leadership. Um, that that leadership that's not going to bow down to what we just came from, and for if anything, we want to be able to stand with it. Exactly. So. These are, um, and, and we're over here in East Africa, so these presidents that we've been looking at and researching, they... They, they bowed it, bowed it. They bowed it, man. They, uh, the Kenyan president, <laughs> even though this one is new... The, so he, he got they, out the gate and... Yeah, he came out and, or, you know, he's, he has a lot on his plate. But the president prior to that, man, looking at the vision of Kenya right now, they got smart cities. They're up there talking, they're talking to the Western, uh, to... I think France, even America, looking at Kenya as one of the major tech countries of the world. Exactly. Like, who 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 would have seen that? Especially for Africa, who would have saw that this is possible? Mm. So only great leadership can put something like that in place and make that a priority. Visionaries. They're like, listen, we're going to get on the map. We're going to mm. bring some of this new age stuff, this stuff that's happening in the future to our country, to our continent. So that we can make sure that um, our people are straight. That's right. They made a contract with, I think, Germany to send a certain amount of skilled, high-skilled educators and workers from Kenya to go over there and work their jobs that they have too many vacancies for. They chose Kenya to do it. The Kenya people. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's amazing. And what an opportunity. The country is encouraging. Take our people. We train them right. They're taught right. They have the education, the background, the skill set. We can stand behind our people. And, and, and uh, I, I shared my thoughts with uh, Musa Faki that as a continent, we must take charge of our destiny. Yes. We must take charge of our security. 60 years after the formation of the Africa Union, we cannot continue to depend on Europe, the EU, the US, China, and I don't know which other place, to manage our own affairs. I think it is time. And that is why we took the decision in DRC. We didn't look for resources from, uh, I don't know which organization. We used Kenyan resources. Wagner, we, you heard about Wagner? You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are at uh, Uganda. We agreed that every country should deploy troops using their own resources yeah. because we need to take charge of our region. These are our issues. We need to deal with the security of our region because if we do not deal with the security of our region, we are foregoing opportunities of investment, of job creation, yes. of growing our economies, and we are basically working against ourselves. Without this, how are we going to fix it? Um, we have what it takes to fix it. And the conversation is already begun Again. on what do we realistically do to be able to get the Africa Union to take charge of the affairs of our continent. Let me give you a case, a yeah. case in point. We decided, for example, that we are going to assemble our, uh, our market 
using the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Market yes, uh, that's uh, good uh, ecosystem. Yeah. And the, the positive thing is that it was unbelievable at the rate at which we were able to achieve consensus and we were able to achieve ratification. And I want to tell you, it is among the things that happened in the shortest time possible. It tells you there is greater realization that unless we act in concert, unless we act together, we are unlikely to make any impact anywhere. How so many? we have also decided that it will not going to be business as usual. We have these meetings, Africa, uh, US meeting, Africa, Europe, Africa, Turkey, Africa, India. Uh, now we are waiting for, there is another one, Africa, Russia. And Africa, Japan. And Africa, Japan. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place. And I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Uh, yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. Well, you are and someone. And so those are the things you gotta look for in leadership because that, that's what matters. What are they doing for the people? And, and can you stand with them? And so that's what, for real, that's what expats look for. So that's, we're excited, we're happy, we're glad, um, and you know, we're looking forward to the next chapter because uh, we're the residential tourists, man. You know, we want to make it that uh, wherever we are, you know, we can experience, we can experience it in a, in a way that... Um, it helps. It helps. It helps you with your research, and you guys are helping us. I cannot believe we are like... 200 and something shy of 10,000 We're almost there, family. <laughs> Within one month. What, what do y'all see? We're grateful. We, <laughs> within one month, we're blown away. Like, we're almost at 10,000. Very grateful. Three weeks ago, we were at two, 2,500. <laughs> so, we're blown away. So, we're whatever great. it is you see in us, we're going to strive to keep improving and making it more and more interesting. Absolutely. And, you know, keep, keep us on the level, please, you know. Keep us on the level, making sure that we are um, we straight, family. And, and sure know that straight. we read pretty much every comment. Man, we we, we wake up reading comments like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. We read every comment. We try to respond to everybody. The trolls get deleted. We try to keep everything <laughs> clean and straight. You're not going to come on our page talking crazy, crazy. So we, we read every comment, and we appreciate it because we, we're learning a lot of things we're talking about right now came from you guys saying stuff, and then we're going to go research it. Right. Because uh, we're learning just like you guys are. Sure. So sure. please help us get to 10,000 subscribers <laughs> today. <laughs> That'll be a blessing, and we'll be so grateful for that. So anyway, family, we wanted to just share with you um, our appreciation by, by, uh, of, 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 of the, the leadership here on the continent, specifically in Rhonda, since we are here. But as we're seeing, you know, the leadership, you know, emerging, and, and and I think it's good too because in the states, I don't think that you get it. You you don't get this in the states information. We don't, mm -mm, you they don't. don't get this they won't. They won't. They won't give you, you know, the versions that we are are, are privy to and that we are right. experiencing. You know, so we thought it important to highlight to to highlight, you know, the vision and the leadership, the brilliance of these wonderful. Uh, individuals that are in Good, leadership position, bad and ugly. all of it, all of it, all of it. So it, it it gives promise to the continent. It gives promise that, and, and for those who are looking this way, uh, we we'll hope that it will uh, help ease in your uh, decision making and wanting to relocate here. To know that um, they're forward thinking, they're forward thinking, and they're progressive. And um, we're happy and uh, grateful and blessed to be a part of the the witnessing and partly experiencing. You can't believe that we've been chosen. <laughs> but just know, you have options. You have options. The whole earth is ours and we could choose anywhere we want to live and, and be okay. Be okay. Mm -hmm. With that said, family, thank you so very much. 
We are grateful and appreciate the time, as always, that you afford us to share of our experience and our learning. Hopefully, there's some value in what we are sharing with you. And um, please, again, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, subscribe. And like if it's something that is likable. And uh, if you want someone else to know more about, about it and what you're experiencing or what you may like, please share it. And um, we, we even appreciate the thumbs down we do. we've been getting. We learn. I'm like, dang. Hey. Someone we, didn't like we it. We do, we do. So comment, <laughs> comment, comment. As my wife said, we learn, okay? All right, family. Thank you so very much. Peace and blessings.